Joe, hey, what's up? Hello, it's Ashlyn. Um, still a little sippy sip. By the way, this is the new pineapple uh, refresher. Pineapple and water and ice. It's actually really good. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is, you know, we're in July, so it's uh, it's spooky season, guys. So I have my Stephen King friend shirt on, which all of his, you know, characters and stuff. There's it. Oh wait, there's there's it. There's Carrie. There's Stephen King himself. There's Jack, and then there's the chick from Misery. I can't remember her name. But anyway. Hey, what's up? It's Ashlyn here. So I went to the library yesterday because I went to the All Ages Bingo. I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I don't know. It just really depends. Like, there were a lot of kids there. And I don't have an issue with kids. I have an issue of parents who can't control their kids and we're in a confined space. And their kids are screaming while we're trying to play bingo. We had to stop multiple times because of this. So, but that being said, anyway, love kids. <laughs> Just not a fan when we're in a confined area. That, that's all. <laughs> anyway, um, they have the summer reading program going on. And this is my checklist. If you guys actually can see it, these are all these are all marked. Except for check out a book from a, gener a genre outside your comfort zone. That is the last one I have. And this is due by the 27th of July. And when you're seeing this, it's going to be the Wednesday after... <laughs> after the 8th of July. So I just figured I would get this out of the way. So my check out a book on the summer reading list was An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. Check out a bestseller was a uh, candy house, I believe. A Kansas room book was the BTK killer, which I do every year. Uh, something to listen to was Badlands by Halsey. It's a CD. Check out something to watch is uh, Red Rocket. I found Red Rocket at the library, so I picked it up. It's supposed to be really good. A memoir. I don't remember what the memoir one was. I put a couple of them back, but I'm not. I don't remember the memoir. Okay, well, the memoir, I think he just marked it because I told him that I read, I'm, I'm reading Will Smith, and I showed him on my Hoopla app that I'm reading Will Smith, so he marked it, I guess. A new book would be... Hmm. Insomnia by Sarah Pimbero. And a book about water and aquatic animals is actually a book called Shallow Waters. And I read it and finished it. It was a short book. And then it's on a library program or event was bingo yesterday. So you have to see a little bit of what I'm going to be hauling today. But um, yeah, I just have to do a book from a genre outside my comfort zone. And that one I think is going to be like a cozy romance or a cozy mystery or something. Because those are like completely out of my comfort zone for some reason. I love horror. I love thriller. I love suspense. I love romance. Um, either that or a historical book. But I'm really not looking forward to picking up a historical if we're being completely honest here. Anyway, I got Red Rocket to watch. And then I found The Candy House by Jennifer Egan. This is a Pulitzer Prize winning... <coughs> <coughs> Jennifer Egan is a Pulitzer Prize winner, author of The Visit from the Goon Squad. Never read it. This is what Candy House looks like. I read a sample of this, and I absolutely loved it, and I wanted to continue it. Um, it says, Bix Booten is 40 with four kids, restless, desperate for a new idea. When he stumbles into a conversation group, mostly Columbia professors, one of whom is experimenting with downloading or externalizing memory. It's 2010 within a decade. Bix's new technology, uh, own your unconscious, that allows you to access every memory you've ever had and to share every memory in exchange for access to the memories of others, has serious multitudes, but not everyone. In spellbinding, interlocking narratives, Egan spins out of the consequences of own your unconscious through the lives of multiple characters whose past intersect over several decades. So we love when our characters, like, it's set up into different characters, I believe. <coughs> I can't remember. I just know it's really, really good. Um, there's so many good things about it. Um, trying to see... This one's going to have more pages, too, than the original because it is actually, like, a large print. It's the 
the large print edition. Um, they didn't have it in the normal print, so I saw it in the large print and I picked it up. Yes, I know that's kind of rude, but I do also wear glasses and there's times that I have to take my glasses off because I get really bad headaches and uh, it makes it easier to read a large print book. Just saying. All right, next I got The Hiding Place by C.J. Tudor. The worst day of his life wasn't when his sister went missing. It was the day she came back. Um, I don't remember what this is about. It's a C.J. Tudor book. It's supposed to be really good. Everybody's been talking about it. I'm not going to read the synopsis because, I don't know, I just don't feel like it. <laughs> um, I have hauled this before, but I did not get to it, so I had to send it back, or, yeah, take it back. So, there's that. This is the large print edition of Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. Everybody is talking about this book. It's supposed to be really good, really creepy, really creepy. By the way, did you guys know Joe Hill is actually considered Stephen King's son? I just learned that the other day. Um, but he authored The Black Phone. Oh. oh, it's a book too? I thought it was just a movie. It's a book. That would make more sense. Okay, I'm going to check out the book. Anyway, this is um, from the best-selling author Behind Her Eyes. It says, <clears throat> Emma can't sleep. Check the windows. It's been like this since her big four zero started getting close to Earth. Lock the doors. Her mother stopped sleeping just before her own 40th birthday. She went mad and did the unthinkable because of it, looking on the children. Is that what's happening to Emma? Why can't she sleep? So that's all it says, but it is blurred by Joe Hill, author of The Black Phone. It says, the twistiest and most gripping thriller since Paul Paula Hawkins, The Girl on the Train, and absolute must read for suspense fans. Um, I've heard a lot of really good things about this. It is also in large print. I did not realize that much. It's actually on the new um, bookshelves, so they actually misplaced this, but that's totally fine with us. We love that. And then I picked up Sunbell by Katrina uh, Ward again. Yes, I said again. Um, this one was so good. I started reading it, but then, like, it was coming time to turn it back in, so I had to turn it back in, and I didn't want to, but, you know, other people deserved it, and then I said, hey, I'm going to pick it up in July, okay, because summer wean, July, you know, it just goes, coincides together. So it says, you can't escape what's in your blood. All Rob wanted was a normal life. She almost got it, too. A husband, two kids, a nice house in the suburbs, but Rob fears for her oldest daughter, Callie, who collects tidy bones and whispers to imaginary friends. Rob sees the darkness in Callie, one that reminds her too much of the family she left behind. She decides to take Callie back to her childhood home to Sundial deep in the Mojave Desert, and there she will have to make a terrible choice. Callie is worried about her mother, and Rob has begun to look at her strangely and speaks of past secrets. Callie fears the, that only one of them will leave Sundial alive. The mother and daughter embark on a dark de desert journey to the past in the hopes of redeeming their future. Sharp as a snake bite, Sundial is a thrilling new novel from the intentionally, internationally best-selling author of The Last House on Needless Street. Um, Stephen King blurbed it. It says a true nerve shudder, shudder that keeps its mind-blowing secrets to the very end. So... <sighs> I'm excited for this. Sarah Pembroke also blurbed it, saying the new face of liter literary dark fiction. Joe Hill blurbed it, saying a chilling and beautiful masterpiece of suspense. I was completely enthralled. Publishers Weekly said this masterful horror novel packs an emotional wallop that lingers. And Library Journal said a stunning and immersive tale of psychological horror. Uh, the New York Times also said brilliant, a deeply frightening Deconstruction of the Illusion of the Self. And those are all... Paul Tremblay, a wild, twisted family gothic unlike any you've read before and one you won't see and forget. And Araminta Hall, clever, poetic, and immersive. Those are all the names I know that blurbed it. It's also blurbed on the front by Alex Michaelides, author of... Um, oh, what did he write? Uh, 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 uh... <laughs> I can't remember at this moment. I think it was The Silent Patient. Uh, Ward is surely one of the most talented writers working in the thriller genre today. This book will haunt you. I love that. That's so cool. And then last and finally not least, I have A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, of course. Um, I actually read a sample of this, and I wanted to pick it up so bad. It was not available. It's finally available again. Um... It says a chilling domestic drama that blends psychological suspense with a touch of modern horror from a new, brilliantly imaginative master. 
Uh, the lives of the Barrett's and normal suburban New England family are torn apart when 14-year-old Marjorie begins to display signs of acute schizophrenia. To her parents' despair, the doctors are unable to stop Marjorie's bizarre outbursts and subsequent dis descent into madness. As their home devolves into a house of horrors, they reluctantly turn to a local Catholic priest for help. Father Wanderly suggests an exorcism. He believes the vulnerable teenager is the victim of demonic possession. He also contacts a production company that is eager to document the Barrett's plight for a reality television show. With John, Marjorie's father out of work for more than a year and medical bills looming, the family reluctantly agrees to be filmed, never imagining that the possession would become an instant hit. When events in the Barrett household explode in tragedy, the show and the incidents it captures become the stuff of urban legend. Fifteen years later, a best-selling writer interviews Marjorie's younger sister, Mary, as she recalls those long-ago events from her childhood. She was just eight years old, painful memories and long-buried secrets that clashed with the television broadcast, and the internet blogs begin to surface. A mind-bending tale of psychological horror is unleashed, raising disturbing questions about memory and reality, science and religion, and the very nature of evil. A Head Full of Ghosts is a terrifying tale told with inventive literary flair and unrelenting suspense that craftily, cannily, and inexorably <laughs> builds to a truly shocking end. It's blurred by Megan Abbott and Stephen Graham Jones, and those are the only two I know, so I'll read those really quick. Megan Abbott said, crackling with dark energy and postmodern wit, this superb novel evokes the very best in the tradition, from Shirley Jackson to Mark C. Daniel Lewski and Marisha Pessel, while also feeling fr <coughs> <coughs> My lungs are shit. Fresh and utterly new, deeply funny and intensely terrifying. It's a sensory roller coaster not to be missed. And Stephen Graham Jones uh, says the head full of ghosts doesn't end just because you close the book. Some horror, it bleeds through the pages, gets onto your hands, stays with you. You'll be thinking about this one long after you've read it. And we love things like that. Those are the only blurbs that I see that I actually know. Um... I don't know any of these other people, so we'll, we'll just stick to that. So if you guys have read any of these books, I would love to know your thoughts. Um, I'm, like, super excited for this. The only thing that doesn't really stick out in this whole thing is the Red Rocket movie, but that's totally fine. I'm making up for it by watching Shutter movies right now. Um, <laughs> I have, like three and a half, four hours until I have to be at work anyways. So I'm just watching a whole bunch of Shutter movies. Right now I'm working on found footage in 2D, 3D or something like that. I can't remember. And then after that, I was probably going to do The Seed or something. Um, if I had a code for Shutter, if I was sponsored by Shutter, I would definitely share it with you guys. However, I do not, unfortunately. And as you see, we are back in the uh, room. <laughs> it's pretty bare, though. There's no bookshelves. As you see, no bookshelves, just the tapestries up still, the lights are still up, and the mirror is still up. Um, I'll give you a quick little view. Um, this is still up. This is book orders all on here, though, from the books that I sold. And then I have like clothes over here that I'm trying to sell. Like, I'm trying to work things through, get some money and stuff. Like, it's sad to say, but it's very true. With the amount of everything, I'm very worried that in October or November, whenever I do end up moving, it's coming soon, I promise. <laughs> he promises, too. Um, those of you who don't know, I'm moving to Texas to live with my boyfriend in the next few months. He asked me, after our 14 months together, he asked me if I would move in with him, and I said, yeah. He said, well, just give me time. Let me, you know, get get my footing out in Texas and stuff, figure out what I'm going to do. Um, he's looking at getting a stationary job instead of a traveling job. So that means we're going to actually have like a home and everything like that, that we can stay at 24 seven. And it also is going to open a lot more things for us. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, uh, yes, you guys do see me drinking a Starbucks. Um, I have gift cards and stuff still that I found, and they actually still have money on them, so I'm using those right now. I really don't have to explain myself, but I choose to explain myself because it's just the right thing to do. But um, usually I would be, um, 
usually I would be donating my clothes and my books and things like that that I'm not using in the house. However, I'm going to try and get as much money as I can until the middle of August, maybe the beginning of September. It just really depends um, on what he says. Like anything can happen in the next few days, the next few weeks, you know. So he's just trying to get the whole house situation ready to go so we can have our pit bull and my cat and everything. Um, Cause that's his fur baby and that's my fur baby. So they've already been around each other and everything. I know I'm rambling, but like, I don't know. I'm just so excited and so ready. And like, I took 162 books off of my shelves. I do have the second, um, I have two book on haul videos, like big book haul on videos. Um, I think one was 70 books and the other one was like 60 or 70 books also, or 80 maybe. I can't remember, but I really downsized my shelves. I have, technically I have six bookshelves, but I use four of them plus a TBR cart as um, bookshelves. And the one in here is completely empty um, besides the books that are on waiting for people to pick up and stuff or for me, I mean, not pick up, but well, yeah, kind of pick up uh, at a public place and everything. And then the, the organizers that I have, the white shelves that were in here, those are still completely full. There's one in the living room and then there's one in my bedroom. And then the, the other black bookshelf that matches this one in here is in my bedroom and all it has on it is knickknacks. So like little things that were on the shelves and stuff, there are no books on it whatsoever. It's like insane to see. And I was like, wow, I really like limited my um, books to what's in the TBR cart, which is only the two levels because I use the top level as a uh, nightstand. So my like alarm clock, my, my remotes and things like that sit on there. And it's also got a coaster for drinks and stuff. So that's, that's really good <laughs> to go from four sh full shelves plus a TBR cart to two full shelves and a TBR cart. So I'm really, really proud of myself. Um, he did tell me though, that like eventually we'll be able to like refill the shelves and stuff after I move out there, it's just going to make it a lot easier if I get rid of a lot of books now. And there were a lot of books that I was just holding on to, to hold on to. Um, like I kind of grew out of like collecting certain books from certain authors, nothing against them. Yes. I still have my Stephen King books. I will not part with those. I will not part with Colleen Hoover, Emma Hopkins, Emily Henry. And I think there's one more, but I can't remember. Um, Alex Pierre Genti, the one that did the Her series. I have those books too. And then I have a serial killer book on the shelf that I will never part with because it's got like all these caricatures of the serial killers and then it's got their stories and stuff. Absolutely love that. Um, it's called The Last House on the Street or something. <laughs> and then of course, like there's other things on there that you know, I have a hard time parting with. The ones that I did just pick up like a couple months ago, I do still have a lot of because those are like mainly ones that are like on my like never ending TBR from like 2019 though. So I want to try and get those out of the way. I am working through that. Um, this one, this one, this one, these three right here are actually on my backlist as well. So and then Insomnia is just a newer one that I wanted to pick up because I saw it and the library got it and it's really, really, it's supposed to be really, really good. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoy this video. I will see you in the next one. And um, again, I want to know your thoughts if you've read any of these books. If you made it this far, go ahead and put either a pumpkin or a clown in the comment section so I know that you made it this far because I want to see who my real OGs are. All right. Love you guys. Bye.